Today on our show. Oh, we're going deep on some trailers, son. That's right, there are a lot of trailers that we're gonna hitch our fucking trailer mm. to, and we're gonna talk about some movies that he saw mm. early. One of them has some magic in it. Oh. That's right, he just teased a fucking magic movie, man. Yeah. Now you see me three. <laughs> <laughs> the legend of Curly's gold. <laughs> All that and so much more on today's brand new Fat Man on Batman. Man, 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 man. Welcome back to Fat Man on Batman. I'm Kevin Smith. I'm Mark Bernardin. Uh, we like shit, folks. We, we like really movies. Do. We like comics. TV shows. We like TV shows. We like music. We like anything that ain't real, essentially. Mm. If you came here to talk sports, keep moving. <laughs> Not your bag, baby. Uh, but if you came here to talk movie trailers, then tonight's, or today's, whenever you're watching this, mm. episode is your fucking poison, man. Because we're going to talk some fucking trailers. We ain't going to show them. No. You can watch those online. I always think it's kind of silly to be like, well, let's fucking run the trailer. Right. Look at the trailer. Everybody knows what it is. And shit. Yeah. I'm sure uh, they're like right next to you in a window on the YouTube that's just trailer, 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 trailer. Plus, I don't want to be off the internet. I want to stay <laughs> on the internet. So I'm not going to replace this with a trailer. It's bullshit. Let's talk first and foremost. Wonder Woman trailer. Yes. Outstanding. Cannot wait. I was in, in the bag for this movie. I'm even more so. Every spot looking better and better. I mean, it was always looking fucking good. Like, the idea of a Wonder Woman movie, just fucking good business is smart. I was worried, like, World War One. what the fuck? <laughs> Don't give a shit anymore. Nope. I'm so on board. The shot of those fucking soldiers on Paradise Island, that's something we didn't know. Mm. Steve Trevor... Fucking lands on Paradise mm. Island is the old story, and then he's rescued by Diana. And then, you know, she goes back to Man's World. But in this version of the story, mm -hmm. he's fucking followed by a bunch of dudes. And they fucking war on Paradise Island. No man's land. Take my fucking money. They're shooting fuckers in the face with arrows and shit. And, and it spears. seems as if Diana gets exiled. Is that what it is? It feels like well, it. Well, it seems like she's, in the, based on the second trailer, yeah. she takes the shield, she takes the sword. Yeah, like because she invited Steve Trevor on and he brought people with him. Like she transgressed against the rules of Paradise Island. Look at this writer. I didn't think that out. Femiskira bounces him out of fucking town. Fucking A, man. And so she, bring this, bring this fellow along. He'll explain any trailer to you. That's my job, guys. I didn't fucking realize that. <laughs> Good point, man. Um, that trailer looks phenomenal. All our fighting scenes look fantastic. Uh, they've shown a little bit more. We, mostly it's the same footage we saw from the Comic-Con yeah. trailer. But this was the first official trailer. Yes, that Comic -Con was a Comic-Con trailer. trailer. Didn't quite count for no, some reason. Like we a, only saw that online. Yeah, that's a big-ass teaser. Yes. This feels like this is real deal This is trailer. what the movie's about. Uh, I can't wait. And it opens with her being the Diana from Batman v Superman, mm -hmm. looking back on her past and stuff. Yes, hopefully getting hard drives from Lex Luthor and explaining shit. Yeah. Because what is my symbol? Oh, thank you, Lex Luthor. <laughs> I appreciate you graphically designing my look. <laughs> I guess Luthor. I'll just stick with this. <laughs> Who are these other symbols? How Nobody. much did you pay to have this logo created? Yeah, that's $100, like hundred thousand dollars. That's like Nike level design work. I mean, it's pretty sweet. Just saying. Looks Thanks. like a seventy year old logo. Thanks, Lex. Um, that <laughs> movie looks fucking dope. When is it coming out? Um, March? April? What? Now! No. <laughs> I'm just excited, is all, and I want to see it. Yeah. Uh, who's the director? Patty Jenkins? Patty no. Jenkins. Patty Jenkins, yes. Yeah, yeah. Who walked away? Somebody else. Um, Another woman director. Yeah. But now Patty Jenkins is the director. Yeah, she I directed can... Monster, and now she directed this. I can't remember who the other director was who walked away. Um, Christine, looks... Christine Hardwick? Was that it? Phenomenal. Catherine Hardwick. No, she didn't. She wasn't. No? She wa They got... She was on... Twilight, and then they did not bring her back for Twilight, right. I think. Is that the one I'm thinking of? Mm -hmm. She did then Little Red Riding Hood movie after that, I think. Yeah. No. We're falling down a rabbit hole. All really? I know is that, that doesn't matter because Wonder Woman. Fucking Patty Jenkins is directing a shit out of Wonder Woman, and it looks awesome. I want to so see good. it. So I want to see it right now. Wonder Woman and that plus music shields. comes in Best part of that movie. Obviously, it made a big impression on us. Killer Cello! Are you saying Jar Jar? Jar Jar Jar? Are you getting a second pop culture hit out of this? I'm weaving it in, you guys. Oh my God, that's genius. Yes, Wonder Woman looks fucking, I give it four golden lariats up. Yes. And that's 
over my normal two Golden Lariat Max. One for bad, two for good. That's a terrible scale. <laughs> <laughs> I need more Lariats. It's, it's like pass-fail, really. <laughs> pass-fail Lariat You got scale. one shot with this guy, 50-50. <laughs> uh, what else have we seen trailers for? Valerian. Fuck. Valerian. Fuck me in the mouth. And this, this movie looks phenomenal. He's a visionary. Luc Besson. The great Luc Besson, who I spoke to uh, for uh, at uh, San Diego on the IMDb Digital. boat. Woo! Lovely fucking dude. And I've loved his shit, man. I, I mean, loved every one of his movies. Really? You guys say every one. I love every one of his movies. Every one? Every one! <laughs> Thank you. Ooh, uh, that requires us. <laughs> you went I hard. Drink. I did. I went so old, man. <laughs> you, went, <coughs> you went deep because you didn't have the pill. You didn't have the pill that makes that happen. That's true. It was more so. That's true. I needed to pop a pill and be like, mm. he was Austrian, you know? Um, but I find Beethoven a little light for this kind of work. Wow, that hurt, but it was worth it. It really was. That was a nice job. I don't care if I burn my vocal cords. And you blow out a mic, and I'm sure I don't give a fuck. It was ears worth it. everywhere, just fucking. Up. What but were we talking about before I lost? Luc Besson. Fucking Luc Besson, La man. I love Kida. every one of his movies. Everyone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. So this movie, Valerian. He loved this comic book, uh, Valerian and the City, City of a Thousand Planets. Is that it? City of a Thousand Planets. What a great title. Uh, since he was a kid. He's been dreaming about making this mm -hmm. movie since he was fucking 12 or 13. Got close, mm -hmm. made his own version of a sci-fi fantasy. Mm -hmm. Fifth Element. Which is a wonderful movie, Bruce Willis notwithstanding. He's a really fucking wonderful flick. And he's great in it, too. Mm -hmm. um, and that was him getting close. Luke Besson's, that was his Valerian. Right. But then he saw Avatar. Right, he had a script, it was like ready to go. So Avatar said, oh shit, this is too close. <laughs> Tore it up and said, I'm going to fucking start from scratch. And he got a visionary movie on his hands. All of these words are bad. All of them? Everyone! Uh, the trailer has that amazing Beatles song, Because. Yeah. Which must have cost uh, $150. <laughs> <laughs> I think he bought it on iTunes for $2.99. He got the fucking remix version. Is this uh, cool yeah, if I use this song? Is this yeah. song a very expensive one? I don't know. But Get me Beatles. I want the because. Uh, Why because? He deserves it. That fucking trailer looks phenomenal. That's some filmmaking right there. That dude's mm. visually fucking... He's visually amazing genius. and a fucking businessman. Yeah. Like, he's the, he runs Europa Remember for a while, he was like... he For a while, he was like, I'm not directing anymore. I'm going to yeah. retire. He's producing. Yeah. And he produced like the transporter movies and the shit. transporter movies. He taken. Oh my God, you're right. Yeah. Fuck the transporter. Like he's got all that fat taken money. The sweet taken money. Like that was his that was his jam for a long for, time. For about it was 10 just years. like yeah, like I, he had co wrote and, and produced like, all you know those what? things. I'm a fucking filmmaker, and he was a filmmaker then when he was producing them and writing them. But now he's in the director chair again. Yeah. But, you know, and, and his movies, like, I, he is one of the few foreign directors, especially from Europe, who really, like, imprinted on America. Yeah. You know, like, there had never been a French director who came over and made movies like Professional and, like, and La Femme Nikita. La Femme Nikita, I remember, took, like, I loved La Femme Nikita. <clears throat> it was hailed as, a, like, an art film because mm. it came from France. Yeah. But fuck, it's as American as it gets. But there were some people that were, I remember, like, the fucking shitty people that were like, this is the death of French cinema because he is making an American movie now because mm. they said it was so glossy. Right. But, but I say bullshit. He totally. fucking created a look that got bit by a lot of fucking American directors. He didn't. Yeah. He wasn't following. His stuff may have been glossy, but it didn't look like anything else. No. There are like three international directors who really like to me, in my limited film scholarship, have had a vast impact on American film. Says the fucking editor at the LA Times film <laughs> section. My limited film <laughs> no, knowledge. No, 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 no. I, I mean, like uh, earnest movies. Right. And I don't mean earnest like thoughtful. I mean earnest P. Warrell. Hey, Vern. <laughs> 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 like, you know, especially when you like post the like Billy Wilders and, and, and Von Stroheims and all those guys. Right. Akira Kurosawa. Ooh. I've heard that name. That name. Luke Besson. Ooh, I know that name. John Woo. Ooh, I definitely know that name. Now yeah. I feel cultured. I knew all yeah. those names. But like the, those guys. Game show. That's me tagging in. Twisted and shaped and reformed the way we thought about cinema from the outside. And also from the outside using forms that belong to America. Give him a single. He's on a roll quick. Like Seven Samurai. 
like was supposed to be a Western, like because Akira Kurosawa loved John Ford's Western. So like, I want to make a Western. It's going to have samurais in it. What happens? It gets remade a thousand times over and over and over again so that the best Westerns lean on Akira Kurosawa. Magnificent Seven. I mean, the 90s action movies all ended up looking like La Femme Nikita. They all had that slick look. They all, like, between that and Michael Mann and Miami Vice was, like, the juncture point for what 90s action cinema looked like. Nice. Then John Woo shows up, and everybody is carrying two fucking guns. Yeah. Like, and that's the only reason. this way. Yeah. And jumping and firing. Yeah, that's the only reason anybody in any movie uh, after 1956 held two guns was because of John Woo. Because of John Woo. Because of that crazy action, because of the crazy hyperkineticism of it, the slow motion of it, the doves everywhere. Two guns, right? birds, fire. What? I Boom. love you, man. I love you, too. You know, like, those were the three guys, for me, who kind of, especially from overseas, looked at the way American cinema worked, synthesized it, Gave us their version of or it. Or looked at it. Looked at it. And took a woo look at it. <laughs> um, but yeah, so, and absolutely, Bassan is one of those guys. This movie looks fantastic. And yeah. I mean fantastic in the original form of the word fantastic, as in mm. a fantasy. Mm -hmm. Like, it comes from fantasy. Boy, it looks fucking like, it looks like the comic material, man. It looks yeah. like that fucking book. I can't pronounce the... Uh, creator of that book's name. It's very I'm super French. Very super French. But, <laughs> All of the French. But man, oh man, this movie looks fantastic. Uh, it's Dean Dehan. Dane Dehan. Dane Dehan. 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 And what's her uh, name? Cara Delevingne. Who was the, in the, the Suicide Squad. Suicide Squad. Looks Squad. like they give her more to do in this one. Yes. And Dane Dehan was the bad guy. He was uh, bad guy. Norman Osborn. No, Harry Osborn. Harry in Osborn Spider in Spider-Man. And, and also in Chronicle. Chronicle. Which he's much better in. Did you hear the fucking, I heard this on Hollywood Babylon, a podcast you should all be listening to. Really? Tell uh, me. That they're going to remake American Werewolf in London? With Max Landis? I think that is adorable. <laughs> I think that's such a great idea. There should be a rule that only a filmmaker's kids get to remake his movie. That way my kid will have a job one day. Um, I think that's awesome. Number one, he's a great writer. Mm. Um, number two, uh, like I love that movie. And if they were like, eh, someone's remaking it, it would have made me upset. But his kid remaking it makes me happy for some reason. I mean, there's at least the idea and that I love he will, that movie. That's a sacred text. Yeah. Me. That he will feel the responsibility to it because he's grown up with it. He's a good storyteller, man. The kid's like fucking bright. Like, yeah. That's the other thing. It's not like he might actually improve upon story. He could, or at the very least, ways. you know, we will feel responsible enough to not fuck it up. He was not even alive when they made that movie. Nope. I was. <laughs> so Max, blow me up. Yeah, how at your boy. C call us, and we'll tell you you're doing the right thing. <laughs> oh my God, I, I look. For, I'm telling you, that would have made me so mad mm. if they were like, we're remaking American Marvel from London, and it was almost anybody else. Maybe Quentin Tarantino. I'd be like, ooh, I'd watch that. Right. But it would have made me mad because I'm like, come on, even Quentin knows better. You don't need to remake that movie. It is fucking perfection, man. That movie is brilliant. Still fucking holds up. But that being said. Mm. They threw the one fucking card down where I'm like, all right, I'll watch that. His kid, John Lannis's kid, Max Lannis directing his dad's old material. Come on. All of that is fucking win. So I'm, I'm all for this. All right. Excellent. Beauty and the Beast trailer dropped. Saw it. Yeah. Looks exactly think? like the cartoon, which but, is a good thing. But thicker. Yeah. 3D. -er. A little more 3D and shit like that. Yeah, he looks mm. cool. The Beast looks cool. It all he, looks great. He does, but there is this weird level. Why did they get it? I mean, look, I ain't taking anything away from Emma Thompson. She's amazing. But why not just fucking get Angela Lansbury? Like, yeah. She's still fucking she's still there. kicking. She just said, uh, you watch that internet clip like two months back? Yeah. She sang Beauty and the Beast live in front of like people. At, I don't yeah. know where it was. Somewhere cultured. And she was amazing. Like, they brought her out. She's, you know, she's up there. 95 in age. years old or whatever. I think she may be in her yeah. 90s. You wouldn't have been able to tell. You, yeah. She might as well have been 70, but she was just belting it out, sounded the exact same. And she just now retired from the stage. That's it. Like two or three weeks ago. I was like, you know what? That's a, I mean, look. Can't do eight shows a week anymore. Everybody's At 92 years old. Everybody's allowed to retire, but that's a fucking loss for, for the theater. Yeah. But she can you imagine phenomenal. being like, A, that good, and B, in that advanced age, and only just now realizing you don't have the stamina to do eight days a week. Yeah, I might need to slow down. Yeah, like the stage, a bit too much for me. 
She's it's too much for me, and I'm 44 years old. That being said, I love Emma Thompson too, so it's cool that she's Mrs. Potts. But yeah. it's just a little bad <clears> to me. Um, all of this looks fucking awesome. It's gonna make all the money. Magneto is uh, the candelabra, right? Um, is he that Lumiere? Or, I think so. No, or is it Ewan Fox? McGregor. Ewan McGregor is Lumiere. Oh, really? Yeah. And so, and Ian McKellen is the, the clock. Cogsworth. Yeah. Look at that. I'm starting to like, ooh, I remember all these characters. <laughs> LeFou is in it. Little kid, little guy hangs out with uh-huh. uh, Gaston. Gaston. They got everything. Who play, uh, Luke, Luke Evans plays Gaston. Uh, Kevin Dracula. Klein plays her dad. Does he? Yeah. I saw him in the trailer. I have not seen Kevin Klein on screen. And Hermione plays a uh, fucking... Yeah, Emma Watson. The Beast. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh, different movie. Different movie. I, uh, I saw that cartoon differently than others. <sighs> there's, there's a version of that, though. Somewhere on the internet. Shrek. Kind of. Totally. And at the end, she becomes like beastly like mm. him. Well, she was beastly. She wasn't meant to be right. a person. Or I forget. But mm. I like that lesson in Shrek. Like at the end, yeah. when she turned into Lady Shrek, I was like, fucking hell. Yeah. Let's, Let's be happy. Fat people rule. Fat people rule. I turned to the normies next to me. I was like, it's our time. Just took off my shirt. You win what you sow. Ran to the theater topless. My tits flying. Fat people rule. It's Shrek world. Think there'll be another Shrek? Be, right? I mean, at some point, yeah. I mean, that's one of the reasons why probably uh, printing money. Yeah, why um, why Universal bought DreamWorks, mm-hmm. so, so they, they can, can keep printing that Shrek. They money. can just scale it up. Like, we want to make more than two animated movies a year. We can do four animated. We movies want a Shrek a universe, man. Gingerbread Man gets his own fucking movie. They already did sh- like fucking expand the Shrek universe. Puss in Boots yeah. got a movie. And yeah, yeah, TV movie. show. That's right. On the Netflix. By, uh, fucking um, our boy Brian Lynch. Yes. Secret Life of Pets and. That dude. Minions and fuck. Brian's on fire. I sat next to him at uh, such a good guy at the Civil War premiere, and didn't know I was sitting next to him Mm -hmm. at the Civil War premiere until after the Civil War premiere, and we're seeing on Twitter, like where like he's like I sat next to uh, fucking Nathan Fillion. I'm like I sat next to Nathan Fillion. Were you sitting next to me? I was sitting next to you. That's like the best meet cute story at a Marvel premiere. It really is. Um, he's a good dude, man. He's him. He's like you. He's like real fucking strong writer, but he's prolific as fuck. Mm-hmm. I've never met anybody who writes as fast as much as he does, and it's all good. It's not like, hey, this is fast and a lot, but it's crap. <laughs> like he's always got great ideas. You two together would make something amazing screenplay. One of these days, we have to meet and know we're in the same place. Good dude. Excellent. Good dad too. I follow him on Instagram. Yeah. Yeah. He's big. Like he loves his kid. Like everybody loves their kids, but like he's doing it right. Good for him. Um, okay. What uh, else we got? I've seen some movies. Are we done with the trailers? We're done with the trailers. Nothing else has happened? Rogue yeah, One's yeah. coming soon? All right, what yeah. did you see? I've seen Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. The Harry Potter prequel. The, the, yes, in the Potterverse. It is the first Potterverse movie outside the books. Yeah, there's uh, no mention of Harry Potter or Lily or James Potter. Really? Yeah. No, but, no, no Voldemort, nothing like that? There's a, I don't think there's a mention of Voldemort. They mentioned Albus Dumbledore um, a little bit in there. That's going to be the moment where I'm like, wow. If yeah. I have a lighter in my pocket, I'd fucking be like, <laughs> Dumbledore! Dumbledore! More references to Dumbledore! <laughs> I'm not as invested, but I want more Dumbledore! <laughs> How was it? Uh, I was not that big a fan. Oh, really? Holy yeah. shit. You and were, like, Dumbledore! Dumbledore! More Dumbledore! And here's the thing. I am a ride or die for Harry Potter. Like, I was one of that first wave of adults who were reading it on the train going into work. Right. I watched all the movies. I've seen them all more than once. I've read every book, cover to cover. Uh, I did not read the Fantastic Beasts like booklets right. that, that J.K. wrote in between. But for me, the magic of Harry Potter, the magic of that world, is the boy who lived. You better be on a single on this man. You know, like, the, the reason why that story is so affecting is because you spend so much time with Harry. Yeah. You understand why he's in such a bad place. You feel for that kid. Like, his parents are gone. And even worse, his parents are gone because of him. Mm-hmm. Like, his parents sacrificed themselves for him so that he could live. And Voldemort, the big bad guy of that cycle, is yeah. intrinsically tied to Harry Potter. Yes. Like, the two of them cannot exist without each other. And they're woven together, and it's beautiful. And so when Harry gets to go to Hogwarts... Like, you felt for him so long. You're like, he gets a family. Who loves him? He's doing the Dursleys. They're letting this fucker out from under the stairs. Seriously. He's going to get a room. They gave him an owl. The kid's been abused, literally, for any way you would define abuse, has been abused for eight or nine years, gets to go to a place where he's respected and loved and He valued. don't have to share a bathroom with his fucking fat cousin no more. Not at all. He gets to go to school like a real live boy, and that's the story of Harry Potter. He went from being a puppet <laughs> to a real live boy. <laughs> Who can lie all he wants. 
Um, <laughs> but the thing that, that Fantastic Beasts doesn't have is that character that we care that much about. It's about Newt Scamander. There's Scamander. no Harry Potter. There's no Harry Potter. It's Newt Scamander, this guy who's a magizoologist. Who is goes that the dude world. from Jupiter Rising? And that is Eddie like, Redman. I'm going to talk like this. And then be like this! <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to kill your planet. <laughs> Does he do that in this movie? Not so much, but there's a lot of like... He left that one in the trick bag. <laughs> yeah, he's yeah like, it's like, listen, I've got my Oscar. That's for I don't the need show this case. anymore. Um... But so he's this magic zoologist guy who goes all over the world and collects little magical creatures. He's got a British accent? He's got a British accent because it's Harry Potter world. Goes to America. Goes to New York, 1920-something. Jazz age New York. Finally, they're talking about our world. Our world. Never mind all these British people and shit. American muggles. American muggle. <laughs> Stay away from me. <laughs> American muggle. Fantastic beasts. <laughs> and where to find them. <laughs> Friday. Friday for the no, November 18th. <laughs> I'm a little late, but you know what, brothers? I can do this. Yeah, you don't need to overpay for marketing. Call me. I'm a jingle man. It's like you got it right now. Just put that shit on loop. You're gonna have to secure the rights to America Moment first, but yeah, I mean that's whatever. That guy's probably dead. Do they have any songs in or just score? Who's doing um, the score? Just score. Um, I don't know. It's very evocative. I mean, they've got a little it's bit of It's not John Williams. It's not John Williams, but it, it borrows some of the John williams themes to it because you can't do a Harry Potter-esque world movie without it. Mm. But, I mean, for me, I just found it, like, not entirely... Like, I didn't feel for that character. He lost some creatures. He wants to get them back. Fine. The world is not hanging the balance because of he does what he does or doesn't do. Sounds like Pee-wee's big adventure. It's a bit like that, but even like you feel more for Pee-wee than you felt for that guy. <laughs> Boy. Yeah. Won't even give it to Pee-wee. Won't even give it to Pee-wee. Um, Who was the best in it? Um, actually, Colin Farrell is kind of really good. He plays. He's always good. It's my he's father, always they good. They just never find the. Well, in Bruges is amazing, but they never find the right fucking way to harness that dude's powers. Yeah, I mean, I, I Sometimes, think... Sometimes, he's a brilliant actor. The problem is, is that he's not meant to be a movie star. You think so? What's I he think, supposed to be doing? I think he's just like a really good actor who does small movies, like supporting roles. Mm. Like, he's not... Oh, not a movie star. Be in movies. But right, like, be in movies, but, like, you're not going to be that guy. You're not going to be the Mark... You're not going to be Clooney. Right. Like, not everybody can be Clooney. But if you're the dude next to Clooney who makes Clooney look better... That is equally valuable. Matt Damon? Yeah. And then you become Matt Damon. Yeah. I mean, I was talking a little bit today in the office about Brad Pitt, who is, by any light, a movie star. Yeah. But every Brad Pitt movie and performance you remember, he was a supporting role. Yeah. Usually to George Clooney. Yeah. Like, or, or, like, he's great in... Th- he broke out of Thelma and Louise. Yeah. He's great in 12 Monkeys. He's amazing in True Romance. He's, like... Don't condescend to me, man. <laughs> Bring back some... Food and some cleaning products. <laughs> um, all right, so he's... So Colin Brad Farrell... Brad Pitt's not in this movie. He's not in this movie. <laughs> Colin Farrell is. And he's great. And he's great. Um, they're, they're, I, I'm not going to spoil the big reveal at the end of the movie, but I will say this. It involves a wizard that they've been telling us is bad, but we have no real way to know is bad. It's Gilbert Grindelwald. They oh, try so it's not up. Voldemort? It's not Voldemort. Because Voldemort is so tied to Harry Potter. so And at this point, he would be a zygote He'd in be somebody a, else's ball sack. Because Tom Riddle wouldn't be old enough yet. Right. Um, Pre-Voldemort. Pre-Voldemort. Um, but I never got a sense of why Grindelwald is so horrible. Like, he's just, uh, he's a bad guy. They mention him in, like, newsreel footage and, like, spinning newspapers. Like, I am not invested in him being evil, so I don't care if anybody stops him. Right. I don't really... You're like, did he fucking put a lightning bolt on a baby's head? No, then that's what him. I need. That's I need evil. To, you need to threaten children to get on my radar of the evil person. This guy's a pussy in the world of magic. <laughs> Unless you fight a baby, you're not a real wizard. You got to come correct. Son, <laughs> that is not correct enough. Voldemort, now there's a bastard fought a baby, scarred him for life, and then hit a piece of him in it, which sounds dirtier than I meant. <laughs> he was a horcrux, see? That even sounds dirty. Oh, J.K. Rowling. Uh, <laughs> so, 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 yeah, I, I cannot. Thumbs up, thumbs down. I cannot thumbs wholeheartedly this. recommend it. I mean, or it's. Shake a bra. Thumbs up, thumbs it's, down, it's, or it's, shake a bra. It's, 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 it's shake a bra trending downwards. Mm. Like, it's a handsome production. Like, it looks great. And, and 20s Magic World it's all looks awesome. It's a poster. A handsome, handsome production. production. <laughs> handsome production, says Mark Bonham with an live newswire. <laughs> now Hitler, starving Berlin. Who is, uh, who, what, uh, who directed it? Uh, David Yates, who directed, like, the last four Harry Potter movies. So they got the guy. They got the guy. Like, it, by all lights, it feels as if, and it, it has some of the texture of Potter. He just doesn't have any of the sort of heart. Coming soon. Potter. Coming Friday the 18th. Ooh, in, in advance of Thanksgiving. In advance of Thanksgiving. There it is. Um, speaking of advance of Thanksgiving, I've also seen The Moana, 
the latest. Ooh, how is it? The Disney cartoon. Oh, it's from the folks that made yeah. Zootopia. From the folks that made, and but more importantly, directed by John Musker and Ron Clements, who did Aladdin. <gasps> and Little Mermaid. Really? Yes. That got me excited. These two old hand animated, 2D animators coming to 3D for the first time, mm. bringing some of that sweet, sweet magic. Lynn manuel Miranda, They're Pulitzer like, We're Prize We're going to take winner. our two-dimensional drawings and blow them up into three-dimensional drawings. They're like, that's not how this process works. <laughs> well, we can. We're Disney. Get me balloons. Those guys can do anything. Man. Yeah. Uh, with songs written by Lynn manuel Miranda, the Pulitzer Prize winning, Tony Award winning, Grammy How Award winning. I not know this. Did they keep this quiet? Was this I, publicized? It's it's. Funny. I know he was in the Mary. He's in the Mary Poppins sequel. He's in the Mary Poppins too with Emily Blunt, and he's apparently working on the live action for him. Dude, Hamilton is so good. It's such a brilliant uh, piece of uh, art that it seems like Disney just backed up the money truck and was like, "Take all the monies, but write us songs." Here's the thing: he got the job before Hamilton blew up. What? Yes. He auditioned for the job. He's like, I interviewed for, for Moana? It. Yeah, with like four or five other songwriters. And like, I just got it. Like, I was still writing Hamilton when I got that job. I didn't know that. Yeah. I thought it was a reward of sorts. Not at all. Mary Poppins movie's a reward. That, totally. Like, all of the awesome that has come his way since then, which is Legion and deserved, yeah. because he seems to have become a celebrity overnight yeah. and handles it about as well as I've seen anybody handle yeah. that level of celebrity. I agree. You know, that like, oh yeah, I'm going to the White House and Obama's blowing up my text and apparently when the world goes bad, people want to hear from me. Like, BuzzFeed is collecting his inspirational tweets into galleries. Because what are galleries? Those are just like the page click. You're like, oh, another tweet, click. Another one, click. Another one, click. Clickbait, because right, right, right. it's the BuzzFeed we're talking about. But it's still... They don't do that for everybody. No way. They do it for like Oprah and Lynn Miranda, apparently. Wow. But two inspiring people in the world. Two inspiring people. Of uninspiring people. <laughs> <laughs> but no, Moana's really, really, it's lovely. It's What's the story about? It's about this girl. She's the daughter of the chief. She will be the chief of this village on this island. And they are sort of, they, they, they live on this island. Everything, there's coconuts Maui? everywhere. It's not Maui. Uh, Motunui is the name of this island. Okay. Um, but the island is dying because apparently there's some some like Polynesian myth about this this mother island that gave birth to all the other islands, but she's got this magic stone that was stolen by Maui, who's a demigod who sort of went against the natural order and stole this magic stone. And with the stone gone, the world is starting to die. Hmm. And it hadn't touched their little island until now, and so she has to venture forth, find Maui, convince him to put the stone back on the island, and then that will set the world right. Maui, good guy or bad guy? Maui uh, is a misunderstood guy in this movie. Mm -hmm. He thinks he's a good guy. The world sees him as a bad guy. Right. His plan was, I'm going to steal the stone to help create more islands. I want humans to have everything they want. I gave you fire, I gave you this, I pull the islands out of the sea, and I wanted to give you the power, but I didn't know that by doing this, I've set the balance of the world off kilter. Maui, demigod, played by Dwayne Johnson, the Rock. The Rock. Formerly The Rock. Formerly The Rock, now the sexiest man alive. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, and it's, it's a simple story. It's a simple story in the same way that like Mad Max Fear Road is a simple story. It's we're going here and then we're going back there. Mm. But the, the mark of when you're doing a simple story, then the world gets to be so rich. You get to build things on the fringes. You get to make sure that everything sort of lived in and feels right. Like... There's shit in Mad Max that you could not do if it was a complex plot. Like, right. if I've got to pay attention to reversals and twists and duplicity and, and betrayals and all of that shit, then I can't... I like, can't watch this dude blaze guitar. Yeah, I can't see the doof warrior. <laughs> I can't see those dudes swinging back and forth. I can't, right. I can't just intake that world and digest it if I've also got to be paying so close attention to the plot. Right. Moana's that way also. Like, there's thing. so much just, like, lovely around it. And the songs are great. Not as, like obsequious and ever-present as Let It Go was, right. but they're so lovely. I mean, it's, it's, it's a song, and I, it's funny, I saw that movie um, on election night. Like, I went, to, I went to a screening, and they asked me when they set up the screening, it's like, it's gonna be election night, you sure you wanna do that? I'm like, yeah, why not celebrate? Yeah, or I was like, no matter what happens, I feel like being away from the world for a couple Smart. hours would not be the worst thing ever. And it was a lovely little respite. You know, because what you came out and you're like, life is good. And it's like, wonderful. Hey, what's the election result? <laughs> How far ahead is she? <laughs> and, uh, Mark, go back into the movie. Yeah, I was like, spoon it again. <laughs> um, but so, yes, no matter how you feel about whatever the election results were, we can all admit that this was one of the more contentious, sort of fractured campaigns. Oh, yeah. 
ever. So it was nice to be able to just remove for a little bit. And that's a perfect remove. And even after it, no one can also say, regardless of what your political beliefs are, that we are in a harmonious part no. of, a, of sort of American society. Healing. We're healing now. I mean, the, you gotta, there's got to be a break, and then you get to heal after the break. You don't heal unless there's a break. Yep. And hopefully you heal stronger than you were before. Um, but before the healing, you can go and like disappear into a movie theater for a little while. Mo Moana. Moana. So do the Moana. And everybody I was on Moana. Supergirl set during the election day. Mm. I'd sent in my boat like in advance, but mailed in. But the, um, it, was, it was nice to be like, because that election has just been every moment of the news cycle for the last what feels like two years. Mm. So it was nice on the final day to be like, all right, I'm going to. I'm gonna worry about what's going on with this Kryptonian. <laughs> yeah, like let's let's make believe for a while. What else you see? Uh, I've seen Arrival, which is currently in theaters. It's out, and now I want to see this yeah. weekend. I didn't go. It looks amazing. It's really good. It's really, really good. It looks like smart, smart sci-fi. It reminds me of the science fiction that like I read growing up. Like science fiction was always like a literature of ideas. It right. was always about allegories and because especially in science fiction you can only write about yourself the stories are always about humanity it's always about you know if it's star trek it's the the white alien with the black side and the black alien with the white side and they can't ever get on the same page because right. one of them thinks that they're like it's we're talking about race but it's aliens like you like get to like pierre boulet did in planet of the apes totally like you you get to use allegory and wield it as a weapon to to convey a message um, and this is a movie that on the surface feels like every other alien invasion movie you've ever seen. Mm. Alien ships come here, and we don't know what they're saying, and we think everything's going to go to shit. How are we going to stop them? The Roland Emmerich version of this is Independence Day, and there's everything it blows, blows up. up, and welcome to Earth, and all of that shit. This is the version where nobody throws a punch. There's never a laser beam fired. There is never any real rancor until the very end. And the solutions for it are understanding. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like Close Encounters that way. Mm. Um, and I remember watching <clears throat> Spielberg do Inside the Actor Studio. And you know, James Lipton with his giant stack of blue cards yeah. said, so Steven, your, your father was a computer engineer, right? It's like, yeah, no, he, that's what he did for a long time. And your mother, what did your mother do? She taught music in schools. It's like, so I find it interesting that the first movie you write, the key to communicating with aliens, to saving the planet, is to talk to them through the computer using music. Right. Like that synthesis of those two. Like you get, cool. to, you get to do that kind of things in science fiction that it's hard to do in anything else. Right. And this movie has that kind of like, that deep think, that emotional core, and that like we're solving this problem with our minds as opposed to with our bodies or with our... Laser guns. Laser Without guns. Will Smith's help, punching a motherfucker in the head yes. being like, welcome to Earth. With no explosions. No explosions. No explosions. I'm out. All right, there's one explosion. Yeah! <laughs> we got one, you guys. It blew it up real good. But yeah, there's a version of this movie, like it makes a left turn every time you think it would take a right. Really? And that right is the conventional Hollywood blockbuster. That's that, You just sold the ticket to me right there. Yeah. It did well. It did, it did very it did it did, beat Strange. Doctor Strange, it was yeah, it's number two cleaning two. the fuck up at the box office. Congratulations to yeah. Marvel once again and Scott Derrickson. Yeah. But uh, this, yeah, this did, did number it. two, I think. And it, it did better than they thought two. it would. Yeah, it made, made over 20. Yeah, it made 24 million. They were projecting 17. Or 16. Ooh, that's good. So, so sci-fi winning some money. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, that sounds good. I'm gonna, I'm going for sure yeah. this week. Do that. Do Moana. I mean, if you're gonna do Fantastic Beasts, I'm not gonna say not to, but mm. just for me, it didn't. It didn't give me what I wanted out of a movie you like that. You want a little more. I want to feel. Like you're not it. saying Dumble don't, but you're saying like Dumble, Dumble with caution. <laughs> <laughs> that belongs on a poster. Dumble, Dumble with caution. <laughs> Mark Bernard in LA Times. Dumble. <laughs> I'll dumble for you. <laughs> I'll dumble for you. Oh, God, that's awesome. Uh, what else? Anything else you've seen? Uh, I've seen. That's a lot. I've seen Allied, the uh, the new Ma oh, uh, Brad Pitt, Brad Mary Pitt. Uncle Tialed, directed by uh, Robert Zemeckis. The this is great, a Zemeckis movie? It's a Zemeckis joint. And it's this World War II spy thing where yeah, they, yeah. they like. I he, saw the trailer for it. He plays a Canadian spy, which you only figure out about halfway through. Canucks in it. Yeah. Because um, he hit his A. Because he, <laughs> he's like, I'm undercover. Yeah. Yo. <laughs> I kept on imagining that he was the the uh, the American from Inglorious Bastards stuck in there. Arriva Derchi. <laughs> Enrico Colatoni. Um, 
And it's it's a beautiful like Robert Zemeckis does not make movies that don't look amazing, you know. And also that are that are like very sort of technically proficient and a bunch of special effects that are meant to be invisible. One of our greatest American filmmakers. <laughs> what? That's not <laughs> No, I will say this. I've also never seen somebody who was so amazing at having a good time at the movies. Yeah. Forget how to how to have a good time at the movies. This is the guy that made who Framed Roger Rabbit, Forrest Gump. Three Back to the Future movies. Three Back to the Future. And what's that fucking movie, What Lies Beneath? What Lies Beneath? Was Romancing amazing. the Stone. <gasps> I Want to Hold Your Hand. <sighs> Used Cars. Romancing the Stone. John Wilder? Me? John, John Wilder? Wilder? I read all your books. books. <laughs> oh my God, that's so fucking good. Like, that's what he did. He... Take my little mule. <laughs> Pepe. Uh, I mean, he was oh, a- I love that movie. He was a Spielberg protege. When are they going to remake that? I don't they can, I mean, do you think they will? I don't think so. Because that was kind of like, hey, Raiders of the Lost Ark was big. Let's do this. Yeah, but like, yeah, and also a romance in the middle of it. Yeah. Like, what if it was like Raiders meets like Joan Collins? God, that movie was so good. It's so much fun. It really is. It's the so sequel light on even feet. is watchable, too. Yeah. I mean, not great, but Al it's... Oh, <laughs> um, Yeah, but yeah, fuck. But like, he made amazing, like, contact shows with up at the end with the boat. Yeah. On, like, Fifth Avenue. With the, with the alligator shoes. Yeah, so he puts his... Oh. <laughs> God, what a charmer he was. That's so good. But yeah, Zemeckis had a fantastic run. And then he went into like this digital valley and made the the train movie, the creepy train movie with Tom Hanks, Polar Express. Yeah, that animation he fell in love with was not yeah. doing him any favors. And then he did Beowulf, Beowulf. which I I mean I still kind of like flick. his movie. Neil Gaiman wrote it. Yeah, but it's like the, but this, the animation is like weird. And I feel like he forgot how human emotions work because he'd been spending so much time conjuring them out of nowhere mm. for these movies. That when he came out of that, like I kind of like Flight, but it's a bit of a remote movie. I like Flight. I just rewatched it again recently. Yeah, like I feel I like, do like it. Yeah, like it's it's remote, but it like it powers through because of Denzel. And what At the end doing. of the day, in lesser hands, that's a drinking movie. Yes, totally. Um, but in in the hands of Bob Zemeckis, like not only is mm-hmm. there that centerpiece sequence mm-hmm. of the flight right. and him turning the plane upside down, but it's pretty gripping. Like Denzel, b- between Zemeckis and Denzel, they elevate that movie yes, to like what for sure what it is. Is. And, then and the Melissa walk. Leo, she's really yeah. been there. The walk, the 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 that's the title Joseph Gordon Levitt, like you know, crossing the Twin Towers. So I mean, the walk, it's beautiful. It's technically astounding. I mean, mm. it's it's and that's what Zemeckis does. Like few people do, but he's at this emotional remove, and you never connect with those characters. And Allied is much the same way. Mm. Like it's it's lovely to look at, but it's and it's a thriller that doesn't thrill. Although you see all the bones of what a thriller should do, right? And it's just it's it's a weird it's a weird little movie. Is there gunplay? Yeah, there's a ton of it. It's World War Two, right? It's a World War Two spy jammy jam. Nazis, Nazis, Nazis galore. Yeah, but Brad okay. Pitt fighting Nazis. That sounds like Inglorious Bastards. Doesn't it though? I want my damn scalps. I want my scalps. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, that is that is my movie roundup of the things that I've seen. This is what you get when you got a guy with legitimacy in this business. Man who works for the papers. The papers. Get the papers. The papers. Someday they'll catch on. Yeah. To my con. He gets to see. <laughs> what a great con it is. He gets to see some shit early, man. You heard it here first. Four yeah. first looks at fucking movies with yes. mighty Mark Bernardin. Indeed. Is that it? That's all we got? That's it. Two thumbs up. Uh, one kind of meh. Shake a bra. And then a little meh. And then. Yeah, two he, yay, two meh. There you go. Oh, oh, that's fucking life, man. At yeah, least man. it's not two yay and two they suck. Yeah, this was a waste of your time and money. That's right. So essentially, none of it was a waste of your time. None of it's but a waste of time. Two of them was an exceptional use of your time. Absolutely. Two you of them I would see twice more times. Really? Now and forever. I praise. Hey. Okay. Okay. Uh, there it is, folks. Fucking that's all the news there is, man. Uh, tune in next week and we'll have more for you. We will. That's yes, because right. you're back from the van. So I we're going to be back on the regular. I'm here for like, I don't travel for another month. So we get to oh. dive into the news and suck the cock of pop culture. That's what it says at the bottom. <laughs> Batman, Batman, we suck the cock of pop culture. My mom doesn't like that on the business card so much. <laughs> so, oh, Mark, must you hang out oh, with that filthy boy? Dear goodness. He's I mean, funny. Some people like him, Mom. He's, I mean, his wife loves him. Yeah. When I say some people, I mean his wife. <laughs> his dogs seem to like him quite a bit. There it is, folks. Uh, for Fat Man on Batman, I'm Kevin Smith. And I'm the Mark Bernard. Come back next episode. We'll do this again, man. Yes. Good times. Hitting, sitting around talking about the shit we love. Come on. Pop culture is better than fucking no culture. And let's be honest, it's better than real culture. Most of the time.
Keep popping, kids. Uh, yeah. There it is, man. For Fat Man and Batman, I'm Kevin Smith. Mark Bernardin. Tune in next time. Uh, same fat time. Same fat channel. Smodcast.com or YouTube.com slash Kevin Smith.